Hi there, and welcome to this overview video in which we're going to take a really good look at the 1.2 firmware update which we've just created for Peak. Peak was already an incredibly powerful synthesizer, but with the new features that have been added into the 1.2 firmware, it turns Peak into an absolute powerhouse of a synthesizer. The new firmware features several new additional functions, including new wavetables. We've added 43 different wavetables into our oscillator section. Here I've chosen the Tokyo wave shape, and now, by using the shape amount on oscillator 1, I can start to morph and play around with that control. You can get some very wide variants across single wavetables. Some are more subtle, and some are more aggressive. We've also redesigned the modulation matrix, whereas originally the modulation matrix would be spread across two pages, one for your destination and one for your source. We've now managed to bring those two pages together and give you a very simple, quick and easy workflow when you're doing your modulation matrix programming. Let's take a look at how we can use the newly designed modulation matrix in our patch designing process. Here we have an initialized patch. I'm just going to play a very simple sequence from the SL Mark III. Go to the mod matrix and let's start to make some modulation changes. In addition to the new modulation matrix design, we've also added two more LFOs into the Peak Synth Engine. These are non-voice specific LFOs, which means that we can actually use these alongside some of the other non-voice specific source modulations to control our effects. Indeed, a huge feature added to the new Peak firmware is the ability to modulate your effects processes directly from LFOs, the animate switches, directly from the keyboard. And in addition, we've added a new source control where we can use the pitch bend wheel in a positive way to control uh, one aspect of the modulation matrix. And then we can use it in a negative value to control a different thing. This gives us a really nice, powerful, expressive performance tool just simply from the pitch bend wheel. I'll go through to the effects slots now, and this time I will take an LFO. Let's go LFO3, and let's take that now to the, feed, uh, to the reverb level. Let's add a bit of depth to that. Now, if we go to our LFO controls, we can take off and then let's go for some rate. You can now hear the triangle waveform bringing in and out the reverb directly from the modulation matrix. Another huge feature request for the peak was a manual switch. With a manual switch, when I press that button, it's basically going to take the synth engine and essentially program it in exactly the same position as the pots are directly on the hardware itself. This can be a great way for creating some quite crazy random patches, but also can help you in your starting points when you're creating your patches as well. We can do that by changing the behavior of the initialize button, and we do this in the miscellaneous settings page in the settings menu. Here I can choose the initialize button to either initialize the patch as normal, so when I press it, I will get my standard sawtooth waveform, but if I also choose to make it live, what will happen is when I press the initialize button, it will follow all the positions of all of the pots on the top of the peak. This can be a really nice way of creating new patches, exploring some random aspects of designing sound as well. Another huge sound design feature is the ability to now switch on looping envelopes. Looping envelopes are a huge sound design advantage, and we can use them to create new interesting movements to the sound. In addition to being able to repeat or loop these envelopes, we've also added an extra phase, the hold phase. 
This phase sits nicely between the attack phase and the decay phase, and we can introduce an up to 500 milliseconds hold stage in between them. Again, this is a great way for adding movement and sound design in your patch buildings. Here, I've created a very simple amp envelope, which will have an attack and a decay, but by using the whole time, you'll see that the, at the end of the attack phase, it will be held open for a little period. Let's take that off. You can hear it's much quicker. If we put it onto the full range, 500 milliseconds. So this will help you design your envelopes just a little bit more. Another huge feature that's been brought into Peak in the 1.2 firmware update is the ability to add microtuning tables. Microtunings are an incredibly powerful way to change the way that your harmonies and your sounds all work together, and you can either build them directly in the Peak itself, or if you prefer, you can load in any of the Scala tuning tables directly from our component software. Microtuning really takes the synth to a brand new place and is a lot of fun to play with. If I play this very simple sequence, this is on a normal tuning table zero, therefore a well-tempered sound. Now let's try a different tuning. Here's now tuning table seven. You can hear this is quite different now. Alongside these incredible powerful features that have been added to the Peak, in the new component software you'll also find a whole raft of brand new presets that have been designed by synthesists across the world. If you want to learn in depth a bit more about these key new features that have been added into the Peak for the 1.2 firmware update, do take a look at the additional videos that concentrate on each of the aspects individually.